What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at TIFF 2024 at the Cinema Center, brought to you by Range Rover Sport. I'm Woo! so excited. Yeah, I like that enthusiasm for Range Rover Sport. We're in the car right now. <laughs> I'm very excited to be sitting with the team behind Harvest. I was briefly saying this to Harry before we started rolling, but I love when I stop watching a movie and one of the first thoughts that I have is how does this movie exist? And I know it was a fight to make it happen, so thank you for pushing this through to the finish line. Yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> oh, these are the muscles. <laughs> Clearly, I know what the movie is, but because it's on the festival circuit, a lot of our audience will not know about Harvest just yet. So would you mind doing the honors and giving a brief synopsis of your film? I'm terrible at that, so I'm passing this to Harry. It's fine by me. <laughs> okay, um, brief synopsis. Uh, okay, so it's about a, a village in an unspecified time, but we're somewhere maybe in the past, but are we? Are we in the future? We're somewhere. Um, we meet this uh, community of people um, on their sort of harvest day. Something awful happens and uh, it basically, f I don't want to give too much away now. It's very hard to do, isn't it? Um, That's why it's very right. hard to do. Yeah. We and, and we just follow this community of people um, from their sort of festival of har harvest um, and we watch what happens to this group of people. I think that's all I can say, really. Job well done. That's one of my favorite things about making someone else do the synopsis because it get, it then gives me a very firm line on where to stop in the conversation in fear of spoiling something for someone. I do want to come back your way to talk a little bit about the script because of course it is based on a book, but one of my favorite things about adaptations is seeing something evolve. So can you tell me where you found space in that book for you to bring your own voice to the story? It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a book that, I was completely fascinated by because at the center of this there is a, a anti-hero, a character who uh, doesn't manage ever to do anything. So I find this very um, essential for where we are right now, all of us witnessing the world falling apart and just witnessing. Mm. Too absorbing, right consuming all of this information and doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the most difficult thing in terms of setting up a film and a story where everyone is a coward. That is the case. <laughs> and there is no catharsis, there is no redemption, there is none of this. So wildly ambitious story and production in a multitude of respects. And in this industry, sadly, when you bring something like that to the table, it can be extremely difficult for people to give it a green light and believe in it. So I was curious during that process, is there any particular you know, resource you acquired, person you met, anything at all that made you say to yourself, like, it's actually going to happen now? It's a film that, that was constantly falling apart and constantly keep going. Um, which is amazing because it took actually, the film is about a community that falls apart, that gets uh, destroyed by capitalism. But the way the film was made was against the thesis of the film, just because every single person who kept joining our film basically believed in it and made it happen. It, it took about, I, I can't even count right now, but I think it's like maybe 18 producers who came along and each one contributed something for us to make the film. Don't ask me why it was so difficult <laughs> since the book is a masterpiece and our team, all of our team was incredible and incredible cast, incredible crew. Um, yeah, but it, it really took the best out of us but we kept we did it yeah. you did you yeah, did, it. did it i find that more often than not when films are easy to make they probably fit into a particular box and that is not very stimulating to me and your movie does not belong in that box so i feel <laughs> like you. it's better off that it was more challenging to get off the ground so now for the the two of you with signing on here you're you're both actors that i deeply admire and you always deliver something different with your work so i am curious when harvest came your way what was it about either the story in general or these particular roles that made you say to yourself i have something to gain from this as an actor evolving my craft um well when i first read it i i kind of knew immediately that <clears throat> 
I wanted to somehow be involved in this story. I just found the story so compelling and um, certainly looking at Master Ken, I, I, I found his journey quite, um, well, kind of massive actually in terms of what he, what he goes through in the story um, from this person who's dealing with grief but also trying to keep things together but also in an impossible situation and then of course i met athena and 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 i, I wanted to do it even more um so uh yeah for me it was it was a wonderful opportunity to play um this this very sort of uh fragile human being how about for you Caleb? um i think it was what um athena even though i didn't know what it was was going to be what she was going to be asking of me um, to play this part and to 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 join in this movie, um, and I, I think that's what I was most uh, that that's what was what I was most curious about. Um, it uh, it felt like it was going to be something that was extremely difficult. Um, mud was the only thing that I kept thinking about um, before going to Scotland. Um, that I knew it'd be a lot of mud and it'd be really hard, but uh, it, there would be a space possibly within working with her where uh, a chance at uh, some kind of life um, and, and uh, some kind of natural rhythm to the film that she was uh, wanting to create um, and something very distinct um, to her. Uh, and I think anybody that joins her to um, that she has to work with her learns you know very much we were talking about it today but uh yeah I do want to add to your experience working with her and I, I stole a quote that i saw you gave in another interview you had said athena had everything pushed against her from every fucking angle including from me as an actor i really gave her a hell of a time i i am curious <laughs> can, can you two uh bring up some times when maybe you had burning questions or things for her that would challenge the material and then tell me how she overcame those challenges every day who am i <laughs> Look to God. Who am I? There is no God. <laughs> Athena's got this amazing thing where she sort of invites you in to it, and 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 you don't have all the answers, but you're on this mad quest. No answers. No answers. <laughs> but you're on this is this this intense quest to try and find something that has a real distinct sort of this distinct voice or, or a distinct way of expressing something very specific and and f i mean for me that is what i learned from the experience it's just uh, every day you would arrive and, and you were offered such a freedom to try and calibrate these very um very difficult sort of maneuvers for me as a performer and, and um i just that was an amazing opportunity so yeah i kind of want to follow up on what you just said like like who am i when it you two both jump into these roles. Was there any particular part of the prep process or even filming on set when you had that moment where you kind of just found your character, like something clicked and it made you think like, I get him now. That's what we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> earlier today. This, uh, this, uh, this kind of every time thinking you're on solid ground and then realizing that you're not and uh, and, and going with it <laughs> or trying to understand that. Um, um. Yeah, there's, a, there's an amazing moment where without giving too much away, Kent has a costume change. And I, I remember in that distinct moment thinking, oh, yes, <laughs> like, of course. Of course, this is what this entire, my entire journey has been leading to this one very specific moment in the film. And like, again, it kind of completely blindsided me, but it was a, it was a wonderful moment of going, oh. I mean, we don't, we don't discuss the characters. Um, so we don't really verbalize any of this. And the rehearsals that we had were very much like physical and physicalized and dancing more than anything. And sort of like understanding how we sort of like swap and exchange and mutate energies rather than backstories and me telling them who they are 
it's more you know every day is a process of doing and undoing a character this is a really big question but can you tell me something about your approach to directing actors that stays consistent from project to project to project but then also something about directing this film that called for something different it's more like the physicalizing of a character and working m more with bodies and gestures and colors and temperatures and drawing more from um drawing more from never from psychology it's it's something that's like a, we're always trying to to transcend specific definitions of what the character is so we spent we spent all our days on on the set sort of like uh so, some nebulous is that the word kind of like a little bit in a trance right wouldn't you say yeah. so so crew and cast were all getting in a trance together and there's very little talk you know there i i hardly spoke with sean our cinematographer and i hardly spoke with his guys it was more like looking at each other and sensing each other i uh, approach cinema as, as a sensory experience and i wanted to be experienced more than understood uh the the big difference with this one is that you know how do you approach a period film while at the same time i never saw it as a historical drama i kept saying to our production designer nathan and our costume designer kirsty that it's almost like a science fiction of the past I like that description. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means, but they got it. <laughs> I mean, I probably couldn't put into words eloquently why that so well applies, but something about that does make a whole lot of sense to me. I wanted to make sure to bring up yet another thing, Caleb, I think you brought up in a past interview. Um, you mentioned that everyone looked at this as an impossible thing to make. So can you each recall something specific about making this movie that someone might have deemed impossible and explain to me how you pull it, it off? I think there's a way that, um, of making movies that a lot of folks have um, become accustomed to. And making this film asks of, uh, of a different kind of thinking sometimes. Um, which is um, from something that is very um, rigorous and uh, kind of where there's no space uh, to, to, to move within. And, and this film uh, demanded um, it to be made differently. Um, and I think this is kind of the impossible, some of the impossible that I was thinking of. That's well put. Yeah, no, just to, it, it was, um, it, this, the whole f film operated on on such a different level that it was it was channeling into that i think that was the most crucial thing in order to truly unlock the sort of the trippy anarchic sort of heart of it i think so that was like the, a tricky thing to sort of constantly be pursuing i think Ethan, I'll throw that to you as well. Is there any particular element of this production that someone else out there might say like you can't do that in this industry that's not possible but then you pulled it off? Yeah, the entire film. <laughs> it it was obvious that we could not do a film with the scope, um, with the budget and the amount of time. You know, I was just at lunch today, I was just moaning how difficult it was to make a film like that. It's a beast with such little time, you know, for a director to have to shoot uh, you know, four gigantic scenes or five sometimes a day. Um, and to arrive on set and we all know our scenes and we know that we have by the time, also because we had the villagers who were never background artists, there was not a single um, uh, extra. There is not that word in our vocabulary. There were all real people, farmers from the area. Each one had the character. 
so uh, the entire scene was always everyone together. So to be able to be given 45 minutes to make a scene, to shoot a scene, while at the same time it's pouring rain uh, and we're shooting regardless of the weather. I mean, the one scene that I, I will always remember is uh, the scene of uh, the feast and the dance that follows it and the burning of the corn dolly. All of this happened in one night. You know, so it's, which when you, when you say a night at the same time, you, you have 60 people who need to be dressed and be seated and for the feast to be laid on the tables. So that was one night where basically I'd, we didn't even go over time because we couldn't as well it? it was wet really, it was like really. pouring rain throughout we couldn't record sound because there was so much noise from i mean it was like flooding actually yeah but and long takes and long takes yeah <laughs> uh but this was i mean the, the the wonderful thing with harvest is that we set out to to make a film where the actual process of making it, of bringing a community together, which it was about two and a half years of researching and finding the place and then getting all of the, you know, getting the, 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 the spirit and the, and the nature being the main character and us visiting this instead of going there and invading it or embed it. Um, there were fields that hadn't been plowed in 400 years and we went and we sowed the seeds and we sowed the field with rye and barley and flax and we harvested it. So everything you see, it was actually a part, it was sort of like a documentation of us being there in all sorts of ways, much more than a film crew. So in a way, the process of making the film in a way was our political, gesture towards what the film talked about, which was the destruction and the creation of community. So our resistance toward the alienating effect of making a film, which is usually, especially if you're trying to make like a genre film, it's a very alienating process, usually divorced from the location and the people that you're making it with. And don't you think it was like, we became this, 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 what can we call this? This like family, mad family, mad really. family living and shooting and being, you know, just mm. being. Filmmaking families make me so happy. <laughs> you pour so much of like your time and your lives into these. I feel like if it doesn't have that vibe, I don't know, it just like can't be the healthiest place to be and work and, and create. And we hope that vibe actually managed to sip through the film. Clearly, this is a bit of a one of a kind experience and one of a kind story. But Harry and Caleb, I am curious for you, is there any particular aspect of making Harvest that you wished other films that you do down the line would adopt? Because no matter what the story is about, oh, she's it made could help it the production. extremely difficult. We were talking about that today, too. I, I would believe that. <laughs> After getting to make this film, we're, we're, we've, we've got a hard road ahead of us in the sense of uh, no and what, what 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 to do in that regard i think so true i mean when you're offered that amount of chance to rehearse with with people to play these characters out with with a fellow company of actors and um and allowed to come up with ideas all the time to say maybe this might work or that hasn't worked maybe this might work i mean that is a real privilege to get in in making a film and now you go into something ah oh, you know where's our two weeks rehearsal where's you know it's, it's something that i think also you can really feel within the the freedom and the play of of what athens made um so i'm glad that that's been caught i just want to work with her when she has enough time and there is money that doesn't get pulled three weeks before filming and fought you know <laughs> every step of the way here here yeah. uh. <laughs>
Let all the all the time and resources you want going your way, please. I'm going to will that into existence. I did want to end with one semi unfair question because we've emphasized the value of community on this production and we're lucky enough to get to talk to the three of you. And that is wonderful. But films are not made without well, the entire cast and crew. Questions today. Oh, I appreciate I appreciate you saying <laughs> that a, a movie like this deserves it. Can you each name an unsung hero on the set of Harvest, someone who who, you know, helped you maybe exceed your own expectations for your work or just impressed you and we need to know their name more. Gregor and his enthusiasm. There was a young man on the film that uh, he came with so much uh, vigor and enthusiasm and excitement and and um, willingness uh, and, and joy and... Um, he, 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 his, his love was very infectious. And his excitement was very infectious. He's a kid from the area who played one of the farmers. I actually saw him um, in one of the Kayleys, the, the dances from his high school graduation. And I was looking for musicians for the bands and I was so taken by him and I was like, do you want to come? And he's like, yeah, but I, I would just love to act. I, I would like, and he'd never, he'd never been in a film before, and he was just a natural. And now he's really considering going to drama school. He was incredible. That's cool one thing. person. I'll take that. Yeah, I need. It's a I very need, hard question. And I very need unfair, two more, like but it, admittedly, I, like if we could, I would sit here all day and literally shout out every single person in the credits of this film. I mean, I, I have to say, and I have to say this that. It's strange for us to be here, just the three of us in Toronto, just because it was such a, it was such a, com, you know, communal experience, and we're missing the rest of our cast. Um, it, you know, it's every single one. Um, yeah, we wish we were all together. Which actually in Venice, we were, we were all together, together, so it felt like a wedding. You know, celebrating us marrying each other forever. <laughs> but now we got Harry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Harry, do you want to shout anyone out before? Just, it's so hard, you know, because there's so I many know. brilliant people. I, I mean, um, I'm going to, I thought, I thought Kirsty, who did the costumes, did an exquisite job. Um, just finding that world, which must have been so difficult because, here, you here. know, it's, it's, um, it's, it, it it's it's full of story you know the clothes always told so much story and it but what the specific story was we're not sure but just sort of being able to live in that world and feel all those nuances those different little details come through i think yeah the individual little things as well i just thought it was magic so i say kirsty and she did it with like five Pounds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bringing all that stuff over. Oh. You you made so much with the resources you have. Seriously, huge congratulations Everyone on did. Harvest. <laughs> that, like this is what keeps me stimulated as a film lover, seeing something that is such a big swing and so uh, so unique compared to everything else that I am very used to seeing in this industry. Wait, so sorry, one unsung hero that I really have that. to mention I'll because a producer is always an unsung hero, and Rebecca O'Brien she is such a warrior you know the film fell apart so many times you know during the five years that we've been four i should say uh apart for anyway like four like full on through the pandemic trying to and you know she never stopped she never nothing nothing would deter that woman from from making that movie even at the point where basically we really had to shut it down and go home because um, we 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 really had lost um, you know a, a big part of the financing and that was just three weeks before we started shooting and all of us were there were rehearsing and she just almost didn't let us know you know so it, it's yeah, just being a baby wasting time she should have told me to take a hike you know, <laughs> <laughs> a few times. She was, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I never actually had a producer because I've been forced to produce my own films in Greece. 
So to actually have someone who not only is a brilliant um, general, but at the same time, she was always so respectful of our vision and always making sure that even the craziest thing that we, and the more, this film was all made with unorthodox ways. You know, there was no, there was no recipe for the way we're doing things. She was always like, enjoying it like just laughing and smiling and you know like a you know a proud sister and then back to the gavel to get on the phone yeah right? exactly <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad you added that in i will say to all three of you keep being one of a kind voices in this industry because it fills my movie love and heart thank you so thank much you. for thank celebrating thank you so uh, harvest with us here at the collider studio to everybody out there keep an eye out for the movie and more coming your way from tiff 2024 for you very soon